Uh, okay. <laughs> so, Got it. let's get started. I'm so delighted to welcome uh, Yewan An, who is a cellist with the North Carolina Symphony. And something I learned right now is that she is an identical twin. And hey. her sister is an organist. Oh my, how so, wonderful. And in uh, order to oh. keep things fairly quiet, why don't we all mute ourselves oh. uh, and uh, let's um, hear from Yewan. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thanks uh, for having me. <laughs> uh, maybe you can say right from the beginning uh, where you come from in South Korea. Tell us a, a little bit generally about yourself. Yes, um, I was born in Seoul, Korea, South Korea. <laughs> and then uh, my mom, her major was composition at university. So I I would say I grew up in a you know musical family, but like not all my family member was like musician. Like she was the only one, like professionally. But, but my dad also a lover of classical music. So I grew up in a, you know, always I was surrounded by classical music at home at like my parents' cars. And then we always like went to um, classical concerts. So, so yes. And then one day, well, cause I was four, I think. And then my mom decided to, um, uh, teach us piano because it's you know the basic instrument like for you know music beginners so um we tried we uh, she tried my mom tried to teach us and then she was of course very impatient <laughs> so she, only one time trying like she gave up and then like we um contact our church pianist so um we that's how we started like music instrument. But then like as Debbie said, I'm um identical twins. And then I was I'm seven minutes older uh, sister. So and then my young like seven minutes younger sister was way better than me playing piano. So I was like, oh I need different instruments like that. Like my sister cannot play. So my mom apparently before she got married she uh, accompanied uh, one cello studio and then like that time she was um thinking oh cello sound is really beautiful if I have a baby like uh, I make uh, my baby to play cello so like when my uh, when I asked, oh, I I want different instruments, and then my mom immediately uh, asked me, uh, do you uh, would you like to try cello? And then that time I didn't know what is cello, but I said I just said yes. <laughs> so that's how I started to um, cello. That was winter time when I was like five. Um, yes. Uh, has your mother written music for cello? Oh, uh, yes. Just casually for uh, our church thing, like a Christmas concert or Easter concert, I casually played um, like cello solo and then like she, she wrote some music for me. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, so what were your early cello lessons like? Um, so we contact the cello teacher that like, my mom used to play for her cello studio. Um, but then this is a little weird story because like when we went to her, my cello, first cello teacher's house, I was the only student of her. <laughs> so there were no people that I can compare how am I good or bad. So I think that was kind of toxic. Oh. <laughs> I was very lazy because like the teacher was pretty old and then I was very, you know, like little cute girl. So she was always like, oh, you're so good. You're so, good. so I never practiced like every lesson I like, fall asleep. <laughs> but like, I didn't very enjoy practice. I just, but at the same time, cause like my teacher was, oh, you're so good. So I was like, oh, I'm very good. So I was kind of, you know, <laughs> very lazy and not trying hard student. I'm very regret about it. Oh, 
Yes, That's she good. was very laid back, but she oh she didn't have her own instruments as well. So her she never demonstrate. Yes, it's really shocking. <laughs> she um never demonstrate, and then like she show she was very um picky with bow technique, bow grip, but then she always you know demonstrate with her pencil <laughs> during the lesson. Yes, <laughs> I know Susan. <laughs> And then what else? Yeah, we never did any, you know, recital or competition. So yeah, it it was very dark era, me as a cellist. <laughs> and and how long did that go on that you were the only student of your teacher who didn't have a cello? <laughs> this is also a very sad story. So um until when I went to, oh, so I went to art high school. So until the audition, I stayed with her. This is, I don't understand now, like why we kept, you know, going there, but like, we were very, like in a good way, we are very naive. <laughs> I mean, right. Cause like we had no idea how to, like how we should to be a professional child. So hmm. there's. I I missed a lot of time when I was young. It seems like you must have caught up. You, oh. you, must, you caught up because you've become a very accomplished cellist. I'm sorry, because like my English is terrible. What is caught up mean? <laughs> you you made up for lost time. You you uh, yes. accelerated. So, I have to say it was pretty frustrated to catch up like all the you know gray chalice like my age but yes so I tried hard <laughs> in the very late time so mm -hmm. so I felt very lucky that I'm here I mean like now I'm in Korea but I got this job and then I become you know professional chalice so I feel always feel very lucky <laughs> well, that I yeah. So when you went to a teacher who had other students in high school, yes. what was that like? It was very sensational, of course, because there were a lot of like my age who um, trained very, you know, um, wonderfully. They had like very nice technique and then a lot of uh, repertoires already they have learned. Um, and then, oh, and then because like they did a lot of competition and auditions from their young age, they always had this very proud and then confidence, confidence on stage, but I was not. So, yeah, everything was like, a, oh, wow, this is a total new word. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. And um, what kind of uh, exercises and repertoire and studies did you do in high school? Um, in high school, of course, Paul Popper. <laughs> Popper. Um, I don't think I did Piatti at that time. I did Piatti when I went to um, university, actually, for audition. Um, and then before the high school, well, because my first, the, 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 the cello teacher who doesn't have, <laughs> she, we did actually a lot of edges, interesting. Oh. <laughs> like we did like all the Dutzauer, is it, am I pronounced yes, well? Okay. Dutzauer, um, what else? Um, do, have you heard about Lee? That's yes. also, sure. yes, Lee. Um, what else? Oh, and then like her teacher was like kind of first generation of like Korean cellist. And then she wrote a scale book. So we used her scale book. Um, and then Warner, of course. Um, yes, that about it. <laughs> and at that time, did you start doing competitions in high school? Not at all, not at all. Oh, until, oh, my senior year. So like I finally changed to this uh, cello teacher who has a big name. I mean, I mean, she was very young at that time, but like she was 
like a rising star in Korea. She went to Curtis and then, um, oh, Menuhin School, um, Curtis and then New York for her DMA. And then she just uh, came back to Korea. Uh, so like, I like, luckily I got her contact info and then like, she like, thankfully she accepted me. <laughs> so um, what was your question? Sorry. <laughs> did you start doing competitions uh, yes 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 so like she saw me like she was the first teacher that like who pushed me to do all the audition and competition so like that year the senior of high school year i did like most of um competitions and auditions in my life <laughs> yes. oh. and it's the first yeah first time so, yeah i learned a, a lot and then i practiced a lot because of that <laughs> And and that was while you were also having regular high school. Oh, that was arts high school. And does that have also the same uh, academic expectations, or is it mostly music? So it was mostly music, but um, in degree degree wise, like we yeah, I got the same degree as a normal high school, but like only during ah. Uh, Yes, but the because like usually the normal high school student in Korea they have to study until like ten or eleven p.m. Um, but then this school, like we finish very early, like uh, like three p.m. and then like we could practice. And then when you turn to senior year, there's no mathematics, <laughs> and then like gym gymnast gym school like physical education, so and then no science so like we could study only like english korean and like um yeah something like that and then music yeah only like few academic things so yeah that was very helpful to practice so you were very focused by high yes. school then yes. and what kind of ear training did you have uh selfish uh theory music theory ear training music history. yes yes all of those. yes all of those yeah. uh -huh. and um did you play recitals at that point um no not that my no um solo recital uh, my first solo recital was when i went to university uh -huh. were you in an orchestra in high school in high school, yes, we had string orchestra and then like just full uh -huh. orchestra. Now, if no, you, sorry, no chamber music. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, um, so, um, did when did you start to have chamber music in college? In college, yes. Uh, did you have uh, school all year round, or did you have uh, time off in the summer? Yes, we do have, I had a uh, summer vacation and the winter vacations. So a little bit long summer vacation compared to winter, winter break. Was it normal to go to music camps or workshops or? Not, well, well yes. I think uh, the like cello, if this cello teacher is, like famous enough in Korea, they have like big studio and then they always, the teachers always bring their students to like some festival or camp. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, so when you started to really practice in high school, were you practicing as much as you were talking about? Like yes. So, um, as I said, I was very lazy, and but then um, after I went to art high school, I had to. I suddenly um, realized, oh, I really need to practice. So that was a game changer. Like my, I always fought with my mom with practicing, and then like my mom was okay. At least you have to practice one hour, <laughs> one hour. But even only one hour, I was struggling. It was like a culture. So sometimes I just like lie down on my bed and like try to practice. And then like always lie to my friends. Well, like if my mom and dad were out and then like my sister were just like play together. And then if 
like we heard the door like you know the thing and then we just like rushed to our room and then, like, tried, like pretend to like we were practicing but then like after high school and like when I got into high school because like they were always you know jury and then you know like weekly con stud uh, student concert so like I felt oh I really need to practice so after after that like I never fought with my mom like it, it was like total difference like my mom sometimes said oh stop practicing you did a <laughs> like yeah that's I, I know so yeah. uh what made you decide you wanted to be a professional cellist I think I didn't um really know what that means that like I want to be a professional cellist. I, I really didn't know what that means, but I always said I want to be a cellist <laughs> from the beginning. Um, yeah, so I actually never thought about the other path or other jobs. So I don't know why I always said I want to be a cellist, but yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. It just I, naturally happened. <laughs> where did you do your first work as a professional player? work oh that was interesting Debbie <laughs> um, oh yeah uh, yes yes so uh, I was at Colburn at that time and then there were um just one year um contract sub chalice opening and then uh, that year I just started to do some professional orchestra auditions so like I wasn't serious about that job because it was only one year, but then like my teacher said, oh, it's, oh, I know Brinton Smith, which, uh, who is, you know, principal cellist of Houston. Yes. And then like my um, teacher and they had really good relationship. And then like my teacher really respect him as a cellist. So like, you should, uh, you should do it. So I just, you know, did. And then, yes, I got the job up just one year. So um, that was my first professional cellist. That's quite a change to come from Korea to Houston. Yes. <laughs> yes. That must have been some culture shock. <laughs> yes. Oh, so LA, I was very familiar um, with California area because my, my aunt's family all, all day lives in San Francisco. So I was very familiar um, when I was in Colburn, but then Houston, oh, it was total difference. And then North Carolina, <laughs> it was really different. So I never expected that I will live in, you know, Raleigh. <laughs> wow. Nice. My mom loves the city. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, have you, what was studying at Colburn like? Who was your teacher there? Uh, Clyde Prinsmith. He was formal um, cellist of Tokyo Quartet. And then now she he teaches at Colburn and he has Montrose Trio. Yeah, she's famous as a you know, chamber musician. So uh, we um, went to Colburn at the same year. So I was a new student and he was also new faculty of the school. Yes. So the timing was very lucky for me because like the first year he had only two students because like that time the main child the big cello studio was by uh let ron R leonard ronald leonard yes yes so and then now he retired so oh uh, my teacher took his he, he my teacher is the uh, only one cello teacher now but that mm -hmm. time like my teacher had only two students so i was one of them <laughs> so i had a lot of extra lessons <laughs> Wow. And then, yes, I always. <laughs> oh, you yes. Lucked out. That's, yes, that's yes. Really and then I even like he even borrowed his cello like for many years. So, yes, it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> um, so, uh, how were you influenced by your teachers in your playing? Oh, like, what were um, the some of the important attitudes and ideas that you got from your teachers? Yes. Um, the biggest thing was made probably like sound projecting. Um, so uh, the Korea, I would say the 
it's more focused on like technical thing and then like our vibrato quality is like always like fast and then it's tight but like Clive sound was like so warm like resonant and the free sound like he has quite fast vibrato but the sound is really free so like that quality was very different like he always uh, make me to do like free resonance sound rather than just like loud loud tight sound so that was very interesting um what else um oh and pizzicato he has very nice pizzicato sound like very yeah very beautiful <laughs> so i all yeah, i always wanted to have his pizzicato but i never be successful <laughs> yeah pizzicato is a, a subject that i i don't think i was ever properly taught myself it's like oh, it's no, a, you're too humble but i think it's part of the finger shape because like his finger is very big and then a lot of flesh like a lot of meat <laughs> so well <laughs> okay. i wish i had his fingers <laughs> Yeah, so who are some of your favorite cellists? Oh, definitely Stephen Isolis. <laughs> oh. uh -huh. Some people don't like him because like he has like not big sound and then very, you know, this. But I think, well, I have known him from my teacher, Clive Grinsmith. And then that was like a new word for me. Um, like I, I heard his song and then like most of the time, because you know, Bach is very personal thing. Sometimes like then some people play very boring. Um, I didn't very enjoy to play Bach, but his Bach was like never boring. Like not only Bach, like in general, all the pieces he plays like very interestingly, very colorful, I think. Yes. You're very imaginative. Yes, yes, right. Um, let's see. Now, if you had been in a more, uh, let's say, um, uh, tiger mom situation what would that have been like in in korea if you had been uh in one of the very uh ambitious and professionally oriented yes um um i think my mom was not a tiger mom so i think that i don't know that's I feel like I'm lucky, but at the same time, I'm unlucky because, like, um, I um, so many, many young Korean, you know, cellists and the, who has tiger moms, but, you know, like, they, like, children, they don't enjoy to practice, but this mom really pushed them and they're very competitive, so, like, one of it, even though they are in the same cello studio, they all compete very, you know, badly. Sometimes they don't have good relationships. And then they, um, you know, Korea is a tiny land and then with a lot of people who want to be very successful. So from the young age, they always compete with each other. So like, um, for example, like, for practicing hours like they always say oh i couldn't practice last night but they practice like with 10 hours <laughs> so like oh. they always you know yeah lie each other and then you know like they always meet at this all kind of competition so it's not a like healthy relationship environment but i think because they always grow in that situation that's why I think right now they are winning some big competitions. <laughs> oh, huh. um, so what are the opportunities for cellists in Korea? If you were a, a very fine cellist, um, would there be a lot of work available or is it very difficult? That's, um, 
No, it's very hard because there's not enough. Oh, well, it's it only happens with only you know very few very top players. So yeah, I think that's why we have to always be very competitive. <laughs> so yeah. So if someone uh, does not get, a, let's say, a top job in an orchestra or something like that, is it possible to be a private teacher and, and yes. make a life that way? Yes, yes. I see. Have you done any teaching yourself? Uh, well, in in United States or? Either. No, Either you, were, uh, you were an assistant teacher for your teacher. Yes, yes. So um, if this... If you are um, part of this uh, cello who has a big name in Korea, um, even the children who just started to um, study cello, they always, you know, comes this like teacher who is really famous. And then the teachers has this teaching assistance because like they cannot handle this, you know, beginners. So um, they do some big, things during the lessons and then like they invite this teaching assistant like me so like we watch like what this teacher wants to do during the practice hours and then like so these children um have a cello lesson with teaching assistant as well um so it's a lot of money <laughs> so um oh. we help them to practice um that's the situation so big teacher and then teaching assistant so it's a collaborations um yes so i did that um and then in the united states like i don't do much things because like i still feel like there's a lot of things i have to learn for um, orchestra repertoires so I just do a few, um, just a beginner Suzuki. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. yeah, the orchestra music can be so, so hard sometimes. It's just really super difficult. Um, so um, I'd like to open up the floor to some questions. Who would uh, like to ask a question of Yewon? You can either uh, unmute yourself or put it in the chat. Yewon, this is Susan. Um, I, 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 this is really not a question and I apologize for that, but it's funny because I, I didn't grow up in Korea, obviously, uh -huh. but in a lot of ways, Although, in a lot of ways, I feel like I've been feeling defensive and apologetic for my lack of training my whole career. I feel the same way. And you know what? The only good thing it did for me was keep me a little bit humble. And that's all. It, it was. And, and you know what? I think you are way better off than you give yourself credit for and uh -huh. i don't and i don't think you i don't think you need to apologize dear uh -huh. and and the fact that you saw when you saw what you needed to do when and that feeling that you didn't really know i didn't know what a professional cellist did how, how the nobody in my household had the faintest idea but you knew you wanted to be a cellist and that's what I wanted to and it was that's very direct that's very powerful that will serve you you will be happy you will do a good job you will do a job to be proud of and don't worry you're not oh. behind, you're not behind dear you are not uh, Susan behind. you are the best fairy godmother um, well See, if I could go back and tell myself, you know, performance anxiety, oh boy, if we could, if I could have just drained that pool of anxiety that I was dragging behind me the whole time, then I might have jumped in the performance pool with a little, a little more, oh, I can swim, I can mm -hmm. swim, maybe not quite yeah. as fast as you, but 
I'll get to the other side yeah. and I might do it with some style. So you know, it doesn't hurt that your first teacher was so complimentary. Uh, no, no, it, that, it's, that's not a terrible it's thing. Really helpful. Now, Pang Lee has a question in the chat. He wanted to ask you, can we see Nilla? Oh. Now, I have no idea who Nilla is. Nilla is my dog. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Okay. Do you mind? No. <laughs> no. She's here. Okay, hold on. Maybe my sister um brought her out to pee. <laughs> well, sorry. Give me one second. <laughs> oh, look at that. Sorry, she's she's out now to pee. <laughs> oh, well, thanks anyway. Anybody else have a question for Ye Wan? Now, uh, uh, on the screen, you're seeing, oh, Belinda, go ahead. Well, I was just wondering um, what your favorite piece to is that you really love to play and why. Oh, um, I I love to play Baccarini Sonata Number no. Six. <laughs> oh, that's a beauty. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, okay. Um, I don't because I I just feel um. Well, I did a lot of uh, I took a lot of lesson and practice hours on that piece um, in Korea and also in the United States. So I felt very. It's not easy piece, but um, I felt compared to other pieces, I felt comfortable, and then you know, like yes, it's very beautiful. Um, and then with the second movement, people really enjoy it with little, you know, like fast tempo thing. <laughs> so I always yes got the like very nice um feedback. So. I enjoyed it and then it's not that long <laughs> so yeah will you be doing any performing like at carol okay, woods thank or you thanks for your question um no not really <laughs> <laughs> well in a few hours uh yewan is going to be getting on a plane and coming back to raleigh durham she's in seoul right now right Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm here to uh, bring that meal at my dog. <laughs> oh. here with my parents. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> well, uh, if there aren't any more questions, let's let you get ready for your trip and wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thanks for having me like with all my terrible English. And it, oh, it's, it's not, it's not, it's English not terrible. Good. It's not terrible. It's yeah. endearing. It's, yeah. it's very endearing. And uh, don't worry, darling. You'll, <laughs> you will do great. You will, you will, you will do great. Susan, we should have dinner together. <laughs> Let's yes, do. Let's do. I uh, yes, I still and I still owe Nathaniel a dinner, and and I think Pong. I I would love to have dinner with Pong. Oh, we we must. We must. I'll have to. My jailer. Oh, my husband who doesn't let me eat in in indoors in restaurants. I'll have to figure that one out. But. <laughs> We well, can eat, we'll eat outdoors. <laughs> for, for all of us, Yewan, thank you so much. It's thank been you. delightful yes. to hear from you and to learn a little about what you've been going through as a cello student and as a professional. And I look thank forward you. to hearing you and seeing you again. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank, you. Good. thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.